Hi, my name is Simon Locke. I'm the founder and CEO of Communications Match. Today I'm delighted to be with Peter Himmler, Principal of Flatiron Communications. And we're at the Cision Compro Behind the Scenes at Social Journalism Livestream Webinar. Peter, thanks for joining me today. Yeah, you're welcome, Simon. So let me start by asking you, how should companies think about the relative importance of traditional versus social media? So there's a lot of buzz around social media, and it's, it's very valuable for amplifying a client's message. But to be honest, most of the agencies in the world today, the PR firms, are still doing traditional earned media. They're doing publicity for their clients. And I, I believe that a good editorial story, a good story, a news story can drive action. On the other hand, certain companies have large followings in the social media and social streams, and they don't have to convince a journalist uh, about the merits of doing a story on their product or service. So, and, and the truth of the matter is, it's hard to rely solely on the benevolence of a journalist to tell your client's story. So um, you have to look at the whole picture, social and traditional. What do you think is the responsibility of social media companies for this wave of uh, fake news we've been seeing, and do you think they're doing enough to prevent it? I think they're we're at the incipient stages of them recognizing that they have an issue. Um, I said in the conference today that Facebook is, is, is faced with a pretty big PR crisis right now, and that the extent to which their channel was polluted through Russian fake news is just becoming known, and Twitter, by the way, too. So the answer, the short answer is no, they're not doing enough yet, but I think the pressure will build and they will have to do something more to resolve what crosses their streams. You know, one of the other things that came up was the steps that companies may need to take when facing a fake news crisis. What, what do you think companies need to be thinking about when they're the subject of fake news? So it's a good question. Um, I find that a lot of the traditional crisis communications techniques are valuable today. Keep your ear to the ground, see how a story is growing. What's happened though is that stories come and go. It's very ephemeral, the media stream today. So if the story pops today and you're, and you're freaking out, what, we have to do something, we have to put out a press release, we've got to do interviews, and then tomorrow it dissipates should you, should you be taking action? So I think the key is to watch the crescendo, watch if the story is growing, I mean, and, and if it is, then you need to take, it, you know, you take steps. With that said, there are always some constituents that you have to communicate with, employees, financial stakeholders, vendors, et cetera. So you have to look at each constituent group and decide what kind of communications needs to be um, deployed against each. Peter, thanks very much indeed.